everyone. I'm in a different place today, but this is just the intro. I had the opportunity to talk to John, who's the founder of Go Imagine, which is a new handmade marketplace. It's not new, but it's relatively new compared to other marketplaces online. So here's my interview. This is a long one, but I would suggest that you listen to the whole thing. It was really interesting. We talked for over two hours. I have edited it down. It's still longer than usual, but give this video a thumbs up. Go on over, listen to the interview, and check out the discount code for joining Go Imagine that John very nicely gave me when I asked him, and it will help you guys get a couple of free months. So I'm the first thing I want to just get out of the way is that Go Imagine is U.S. based and Correct. it's only for U.S. sellers. So 100%. if if you are watching this, and now I'm talking to the audience, if you're watching this and you are not in the U.S., unfortunately, Go Imagine is not an option for you right now. But there were some international sellers who wanted me to ask you if you ever have any ideas about expanding to other countries or if you plan on just keeping it U.S. based only. And I would not blame you if you did right. want to just keep it U.S. because this the thought of dealing with a worldwide marketplace is a nightmare to me. And I'm, yeah, so I'm this, actually, this, know. this question comes up a lot. Uh, we get it a lot and it's exciting because, you know, people around the world are asking us, they like what we're doing and want to get involved. Um, what I would tell you is as of today, we don't have any short-term plans to open up international. Um, there's a number of reasons for that though. One is just logistics. From a, from a technology standpoint, uh, we're a small company right now, and to try and integrate customs, VAT taxes, uh, multilingual, which includes support in multiple languages, um, the list goes on in terms of shipping and integrations, that it, it, different currencies, it gets a lot more unwieldy when you open up to another country in that sense. And, and as an example right now, we, we currently manage taxes for all of our makers, right? That's 50 states. We're already managing state tax for 50 different locations, which is kind of a pain in the butt. If we had more countries, it's just more tax regulations that we're going to have to try and manage. So as a small team, I don't think we have it in us right now to try and expand out of the U.S. I do also believe that being U.S. only is a differentiator. Um, and this is no knock on anyone who sells outside of the U.S. I think it's wonderful. But for people in the U.S. that are shopping online, there is a, something that's nice about knowing you're buying from a U.S. maker because all the other marketplaces, you are shopping worldwide and we're keeping it local. And we're actually going to be um, in upcoming months expanding our shop local features to allow people to actually get less U.S. and even more to their locale. And what I mean by that is when you search, you'll be able to filter by your state. So you could say, who's close to me? And and, and shop from people in your state, in your town. Um, we have a lot of ideas of actually going more local. Um, if we ever do expand, I think the first country we're going to go to is Canada um, because A, under NAFTA rules, uh, which is the legal rules, it's easier for commerce between those two countries than to Europe because of the rules of that. So yeah, so if we go broader, it'll be Canada next. Um, but I, I can't give a timeline just because we got so much other stuff going on. Yeah, and I did see that you have a local because I've been setting up my shop. If you guys are wondering if I've set it up, yes, I have. I'm in the process of setting up a shop, so I've been in there working around with the dashboard and that kind of thing. And I saw that you do have an option for local pickups, which yes. is something that a lot of sellers have wanted, and it's not something that is available on a lot of other platforms because they're all looking for the tracking numbers. But with the local pickups, then that's a good way to sell locally, which I think is really important, especially for people that sell large things. And yes, I have some people in my groups who sell like large, there's one woman who sells large handmade mosaic mirrors. Uh -huh. Those are, I can't even imagine trying to ship one. You couldn't of those. even ship it. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh something that's so fragile, you just can't ship. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and to get to that point, even um, from a Go Imagine standpoint, we really built this platform to support makers wherever they are. And what I mean by that is we, of course, would love for you to sell through Go Imagine because we make a small percentage, but we also want to help you sell locally. Um, we're going to be integrating, uh, I can't ex never give timelines because it's development, but we want to integrate payment platforms like a Square or something. You can take payments in person at a craft fair. Um, we want to encourage you to make the money however you can and use us as a resource, but not lock you into a situation where you're like, feel like you're beholden to go imagine we're here as a tool to help you not constrict you. Is that a good way to put it? Yeah, I think that's, that's a good, yeah, 
because a lot of a lot of marketplaces, I think people get used to being on there and they feel like they have to stay there because yeah, we we know. Yeah. Um, so. or they, they, or they, they say you can't direct people off platform. You can't put any links inside of your, uh, we, we ask that you don't send them to any other marketplace. Like you don't send them to like another marketplace, but if you have your own website where you're doing non handmade work, but you're still part of your business, you can certainly in our site say, Hey, you're looking for these products that go with this, go to our other website. You know, we want to encourage the makers to be able to build their business the way they feel is right for their business. What if you sell wholesale on your website, but not on Go Imagine? It's, it's, it's okay to send people there. Or like if I have things on like on my Go Imagine shop, I'm not uploading um, my listings for silicone molds because right. I have a plan down the line to kind of get get out of that just because I'm developing an allergy to it, I think. Um, so when That's I make fun. the mold, yeah, when I make the molds, uh, every time I do it, I'm washing my hands really well and that kind of stuff. But I'm just doing part of my product line but I still have the silicone molds on my website. So if somebody writes to me on Go Imagine, can I say, I only sell those on my website. Here's the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So like okay. the only thing we ask is you don't send them to another marketplace that is a call it a competitor of ours. Exactly. But, okay. but we want to support you in your business. So if it's a, something you can't sell on Go Imagine, but you sell somewhere else, you can most certainly direct customers to that. Oh, that's great. Okay. Because that's always a question that people have. They don't want to, you know, people don't want to break the rules, but they don't know where that line is. So oh, I, yeah. and, and, and it's uh I'm sure we'll get into this, but drawing that line has always been a discussion for us, right? Mm -hmm. Um and I guess I, I know we'll go here anyway is what is handmade and what's not handmade is okay. I think always a big discussion, right? Here, okay. This is gonna open it up. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead. What do you what do you define as handmade in as as go imagine defines it, what is handmade? We'll just right. put it that way. Right. Well, there's, th th that's then this is a loaded question for the world. Yeah. Um, I would say what we define it today is, I mean, I, I personally, I have a very simple explanation for handmade. I think it's not handmade unless a hand touches it from the seller. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm a purist, but the seller's hand has to touch something to be handmade, right? Uh, that's why currently on, on Go Imagine, we do not allow drop shipping. We do not allow print on demand because from that perspective, you have a lot of people that, you know, um, it's being fulfilled and created by somebody else, which takes away the, 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 the personal aspect of the seller delivering it to you or the seller actually handing it over to you. I mean, a lot of the charm of handmade is it comes with a little note in it or the fact that it came from that person's house or workshop. If it's drop shipped from a, a warehouse from Amazon, well, why not just buy it on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for us, it's all about the seller's hands touching it, right? Um, now that said, when we first started this, you know, we we kind of made the blanket and no drop shipping phrase because that for us to manage it, that was easy, no drop shipping, right? We get into a situation though, you're like, well, what about photographers? right? They can't own professional photography printers because those are super expensive or everything else, but it's still a uh, handmade art. How do they do that? Right. Uh, what about painters that are making their acrylics into, into prints of their, of their nice paintings. Right. And so what we've done just recently with go imagine is we're putting together a handmade integrity team. Um, and if you go to, uh, hit team.com, uh, I mean, actually no, not hit team.com. It's, can I share my screen in this video? Oh yeah, go ahead. All right, sure. Okay. Let's do it. So hit we just team, hit team.com sounds no, no, pretty no, serious, right? <laughs> no, no, it's not hit team.com. It's goimagine.com hit, hit dash team. Sorry. Okay. Totally, totally, <laughs> totally, I, I said, I said, I misspoke. That's um, all right. I'm watching you can say, my, but we launched this last week. And so with the, the way we look at it is we want our community to help define handmade. We don't want uh, us to be the arbiters of truth for handmade, right? So, so we create, we're creating this handmade integrity team where it's an application that's out right now. We've gotten, I think, you know, upwards of a hundred applications of people who want to be volunteers to a help us continue to define handmade into the future and b enforce the handmade rules on the marketplace. Right. And that doesn't mean even the handmade integrity team has carte blanche access to just change at will the, the definition. It just means that we have uh, representatives on each category and then if we ever want to change an actual handmade uh, guideline, uh, most likely it would go to a vote within the community. Um, so that leads to the fact that as an example, 
Today, we are no drop shipping, right? Because we don't, we, we, we believe that's just not handmade. Now, are there caveats or exceptions, right? What we don't want is people who can print mugs on their own sublimation machine to compete with people that are doing print on demand drop shipping. But the person who's a photographer doing high quality artistry that needs to use an outsourced printer is being left out in the cold right now because of our black and white stance. Mm -hmm. So we need to discuss a effective way to maybe open up some categories to drop shipping or print on demand, but not open up other categories that, that can be done at home. And the concern here is that it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a slippery slope. And, and, and we do not want to ever allow production partners. We think production partners are manufacturing. It's just a fancier word to say, I got it manufactured. And to start the company, we kind of just had a no drop shipping rule because, you know, we were new and figuring it out. And as we progress, if we are going to open anything up, it's going to be with a very well thought through plan with an integrity team that really can enforce things in a way that doesn't become that slippery slope where you say, okay, well, photographers can do it. And now you're seeing t-shirts on our site. You can buy at Walmart because they're drop shipped from print on demand. And you're like, well, wait a second. Like, so yeah. So is that a, is that a good answer or a non-answer? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's a good answer. And number one, I'm going to go over and apply for this team. And I think probably everyone who watches this channel is going to also, because we're so fed up with this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll, Fair. we'll see. Um, but I, uh, that, I do, that said, you have first off, you have to be a Go Imagine member to be on our campaign. I am a Go Imagine member. I know you now. are okay. about to say I for am. everyone else watching. Yeah, we get a bunch of, to... I don't want to be on your platform, but I want to enforce the rules for it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and speaking speaking of which, John has given me a code that if you use my code that I'm going to put in the description of this video, you can get two months free on Go Imagine. Yes. Any tier level. So you can have the the highest, which is ten dollars, right? It's ten dollars a month. Ten dollars a month is highest tier, yeah. That's the most expensive. That's that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's more than good. But you can use my code. I'm going to put it in the description of the video, and I'll put it in the first comment also. And you can get two months for free, yeah. and then you can try out the platform and just load everything in. Because I'm in the process right now of loading everything in from Etsy. You can download a CSV file from Etsy, upload it, but then you have to go in and tweak everything just to get rid of the Etsy references and the Etsy specific stuff. You know, mm -hmm. but it makes it a lot easier. We were talking about this before we started because um, yeah. it'll import your pictures and everything like that. So, yeah, I, I, would, also, I would say I, our our, our Etsy our Etsy import I would say is a head start. I mean, it doesn't yes. finish everything, but it gives you no. a big head start versus doing it from scratch. Absolutely, and I do like I really like that you can put you guys can embed a video in the listing, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm not talking about like a listing video. I'm talking about a YouTube video, and yes. I have links in my Etsy listings to my YouTube channel. And when they're imported into Go Imagine, the video actually shows up in the description. Nice. I'm like, hallelujah, because that is really helpful for customers to be able to actually see the thing in use yeah. or to see it on someone. And then it helps your YouTube channel too. So it's, it's interesting. It's interesting you mentioned videos too, because um, we're, we're in the process. We're going to be redesigning our product page. I mean, by the way, I said to you before I ramble, Kara. So get me back hey, on track if you want. I, and I told you join the ramble um, train because I'm all over that. <laughs> I'm the driver of that train. So so we're redoing our product page, just a design from it, right? And and one thing we're going to continue to highlight more within the product page is it's not just about the product; it's also about the maker, right? Um, because we feel that when people buy a handmade, they're not just buying the product, they're buying maybe sometimes the story behind it. You know, who's the person that made it? Where is it coming from? It creates that personal aspect. Uh, kind of like when you go to a craft fair and you get to meet the person and talk for a couple minutes about, you know, who they are versus, you know, that Amazon experience where it's just like, I don't care who the seller is, just send it to me. So we're going to be leaning more into the maker uh, being part of the product. And with video, we're considering, and I, I'd like your opinion is, much like, uh, you know, the TikTok world we live in or Instagram world where we want to have a meet the maker video, short video that's on the product page where makers can have a little video that says, you know, hey, my name's Kara. I'm from this state. I've been making this for 20 years. I got two dogs and a son. And uh, I really hope you like me. Yeah, but like that, 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 that 20 seconds for someone to get to know who you are. You know, I'm an avid uh, uh, embroider. I learned from my grandmother, whatever it might be. But I think other platforms do not lean into the maker enough. 
um, because that is the charm of buying handmade. Now, I also know a lot of makers get scared about being on video. <laughs> yeah, I hear that a lot. Yeah. So, so we won't necessarily require it, but I do think when we get to that point, it's going to be a huge selling feature for them because you want to differentiate yourself. That's how to do it you know, is to really let people know who's selling you the product, not just what the product is. And anyway, I, as an aside, you mentioned a video and I wanted to say that the, the meet the maker video, I think is something that I'm excited about that we're going to be developing. Yeah, I, I like that idea. And, you know, a lot of people will put in their about section on your website or your marketplace shops or whatever, you'll put about you, but it, that that should be about the business but then there should be a separate section about you. So there's about us and about you and about right, right. like on, I have multiple blogs and there's one that has about us, which is about the blog and about me, which is about me. And right, the video right. there is perfect. And I think that's a really good way to cut right through who is making my stuff. Who, who am I going to be ordering from? Well, and, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah I mean, and that's, that's why they're buying handmade, right? Yeah. And it makes people trust the buying experience more if they see that you're an actual person. So uh, absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That works. It works for me. Okay. Now you mentioned the photography thing. So I, I had some questions about the prints, but I think that's, it sounds like you're having, I, I do like that you're involving the people who are on the platform, the members of the platform and making these kinds of decisions, because I think that's really important. And, um, the other thing that I have questions here from people in my group um, sure. one was, do you ever, do you ever plan on allowing print on demand? I would guess based on your answer, it would be no, unless it was a specific situation that people come to an agreement it, because that you, the, the problem, like you said, it's a slippery slope. When you open that door, if your definition of handmade is your hands have to touch it, then you open the door to print on demand or drop shipping products um right. you know you have to so, bear so let's 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 open pandora's box here okay uh and myself and my co-founder stephanie romke um who you see in our community all the time and she is an artist she's a seller you know i'm more, I'm more from the tech side she's from the maker world and so we make a good team mm -hmm. we've had this debate for a while and i think what we're leaning towards at least i am and by the way, I'm not the arbiter of truth because this is all decided by the community. So whatever I say doesn't mean it goes because we're building a team to do it. Is I think the term maker and the term artist have somehow over time kind of melded. And I think they're two different things, right? A maker is someone who actually makes a product. An artist is someone who is the creative behind it, right? And on Go Imagine, a product has to be one or the other it cannot be neither. And what I mean by that is this, you have a lot of people who are makers. Maybe they bought a crochet pattern. They didn't design creatively. Maybe they bought, you know, whatever design they didn't create, but they then made it. That is handmade because they're the maker. Mm -hmm. An artist might be a graphic designer uh, who created a cool custom graphic on their own. Maybe it's a photographer who took an amazing photo. Maybe it's a painter who did a creative. And now that creative artistry is going to get printed onto a t-shirt or a mug, but it's their creative art. Mm -hmm. What we find on other marketplaces is people are getting around the rules by not being a maker or an artist. They will buy a vector image. They will buy a vector image that they did not creatively design. So they are not the artist mm -hmm. and they will then have a print on demand. So they did not make it either. So they get a vector image they slap it on an image of a mug or a t-shirt. They put it onto the website. It sells. They weren't the artist and they weren't the maker. <laughs> now you can say that every artist is a maker, but not every maker is an artist. You know what I mean by that? Where like, like a maker can buy the crochet pattern. So they didn't do the creative of the artist, but they are the maker who took someone else's creative and mm -hmm. made it right. Uh, an example of that would be, let's say you our graphic designer that did a wonderful graphic design. That's an original graphic design. Yeah. And your friend does in, in their garage sublimations of t-shirts and took your design and made the t-shirt. Well, in that scenario, you were the artist. They were the maker. Mm -hmm. They took your artistry and made it of it. But right. you were also a maker as well because you made the artistry. Anyway, I know I'm getting very, but so this is where I think that slippery slope has happened on other platforms where 
well, I'm the artist. And, th- and then you get around the point like, well, I am the artist because I went on Canva and typed the word hello in a fun font. And now it's print on demand, but I'm the artist. Like, well, were you the artist? I mean, yeah. was there any real talent and hard work and blood, sweat and tears that went into you picking a fun font and saying a funny phrase that you heard somewhere else? So this is where the slip into it. But again, then there's the true artists that are creating this amazing artwork that deserves to be print on demand. And I'm getting off topic here, but the short story is I don't want to be the one to make that decision, which is why we have the handmade integrity team being created. So our maker community can help this debate. Okay. I think, I think to get consensus on allowing print on demand is going to be a ways off because having a way to enforce it correctly is a very difficult task. And, and if the decision is we don't allow it, but maintain the hand integrity of handmade or do allow it and have a slippery slope of not being handmade anymore, we're going to go the cautious route until we can truly feel confident. We can go the other route without losing our handmade ethos. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's completely fair. And it is an incredibly difficult gray line to navigate because you know like there's designers who will design something and like you said they they design it and then someone else takes it and makes it so yeah it's it's just a mess yeah because the reason that handmade guidelines have to be what i would call fluid but fluid to the point if we have a handmade integrity team to always analyze things as new yeah. technologies come about ai exactly, being yeah. one of them yeah and when a new technology comes out our handmade integrity team has to consider what is it like for instance when cricket became big uh, uh, it opens oh up, God. it opens up a whole world of people being able to make things that couldn't be made before like that. Well, when that came out, if this was, you know, whenever it came out 20 years ago, there would have been a discussion with our handmade integrity team. Are cricket users allowed to be handmade? And the answer probably is yes. And they are mm-hmm. AI is another one that comes out and we say, is this handmade right now? It's a no, we got to look into it. Let's take a pause and figure it out. Um, I know we're going to, uh, excuse my French, we'll probably piss some people off with some of our uh, decisions. Um, mm-hmm. You probably hear a little bit of my pause when I'm talking because. Well, it's I a do- hard conversation. It's complicated and it's hard and it's a new topic. So it, you're right to take a pause because sometimes you just have to say, we need to wait and let the dust settle a little bit before we can make decisions because right. making a decision too fast just to appease people is not going to work out in the long run. It's, Absolutely it, it not. It's going to lead you not. down that road of opening stuff up to products that you don't think are appropriate for right, the platform. Right. So, well, well, that's the thing is like, and I feel bad that there are some artists who are left out in the cold from Go mm-hmm. Imagine right now because our, our our we were more guarded at first, saying, "Well, listen, if we open up to POD for professional photographers, is that opening the floodgates for all the stuff we don't want as well?" And and so we said, "Let's stay." more strict on handmade now. And, and that was, so our, our original handmade guidelines that you see on our website are the same guidelines we started with, right? Now that there's been a lot of discussion in our community, we now have thousands of makers in our community. We're now saying, okay, it's time to start reviewing those guidelines, but that's why we're going to create a handmade integrity team that gets involved, has the debates, has the discussions. And then if any changes are considered, we will most likely bring that to a vote. And then we're creating a, a, a way of doing this in a democratic way so that, like you said, there's no rush decision, but the biggest decision is not only what we change, but how we enforce it. Yeah, yeah. Enforcement's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Etsy, and I know we want to talk about Etsy much, they're having a really hard time with enforcement right now. And a lot of that oh. is because they're having a lot of AI enforcement, which is taking things off that shouldn't be taken off, leaving things on that should be left on, you know? Yeah. And so as a, as a handmade marketplace, we just need to be very careful about how we go about it. Yeah. And yeah. And I, I, you guys at the beginning, I did say, I don't want to focus on Etsy too much because there's a lot of comparison with Etsy and any other handmade marketplace that opens up. And I will put links in the description of this video to a, a few other interviews with John, where he's talking about the origins of Go Imagine and the mission statement and all that kind of stuff. So you can go watch those. There's one that's really good and instructive about what happens when a marketplace goes public and has investors and the goals tend to change. 
Nice. So go imagine's goals are not that. And if you, why don't you just give a real quick background summary for people who don't know what the platform mission statement is and your plans <laughs> for the future. And I know you said you ramble, but you know. No, that, that's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, maybe it'd be good for me to tell people what Go Imagine is since we just yeah. started talking. Yeah, I mean, we just, <laughs> just launched into it. So I, I don't know. Yeah, you're like, what is Go Imagine? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'll keep this as condensed as possible. Here, here's really where we're at. Um, I believe, and I, th and I think our community believes that in the real world, there are two places to buy products. There are private organizations, private malls. That's where you go to a mall owned by a corporation and you shop at the gap and you shop at Abercrombie or Marshall's wherever, right? Then there are public places in the real world to shop. That's where you go to your farmer's markets. You go to your street fairs, you go to your town centers. And a lot of those public marketplaces around the country are owned by cities, they're owned by towns, they're owned by 501c3 nonprofits, and they're designed as a social element to commerce in the real world. Some of these big uh, public marketplaces provide back to society. The one in Seattle, uh, Pike's Market, um, donates money to charity and they feed over a th thousand hungry people a, a week in Seattle based on the marketplace sales, the, the, mo the money coming from the marketplace. Now, along the way on the internet, 20, 30 years ago, the internet's been the wild west, right? And just like the real wild west where people start claiming land, I own this and I own this and I own this and I own this. And all of a sudden, all these people came to America and started owning everything. Well, the internet's been the same thing. And all these corporations said, holy crap, we can make a lot of money. I'm going to own of the booksellers. I'm going to own the handmade. I'm going to own the Airbnb. I'm going to. And so these Wall Street corporations came in and just started claiming digital land. And before you know it, the internet is owned by corporations and there is no public land on the internet because the government isn't enforcing it. There is no, but, but I would contend the internet was built with public funds. The internet should be a public space. People live on the internet. They socialize on the internet. They transact on the internet. And this is not an anti wall street movement by any means. I think Capitalism is great and it deserves to have its day in, 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 the, in the sun. I also firmly believe there is a balance to the world. And as much as we need that corporate element, you also need the public element. And so what we're focusing on is creating what I would call the public marketplace for the internet, the place that is focused on social good and community, the place that is focused on being affordable for people to sell their goods and not be what I've been saying is a toll booth to the internet. Because right now, whether you want to sell on any of the corporate marketplaces or get your own website on a Shopify or Wix, which is owned by Wall Street, what you've created is between the internet and the people is one big toll booth of Wall Street. And I don't think that is the intent of the internet when it was first designed. So we're saying let's democratize the internet uh, to have an alternative that is more public and socially good. Doesn't mean we're going to compete with Amazon and beat them. That's not going to happen, but there has to be some yin and yang to the world on the internet. So that's the big thing. And now for those who don't know, we donate all of our profits to charity. So a, we obviously have to run our company. And as we grow, we'll have marketing expenses and employees and all that, but any profits we make above, uh, you know, our expenses, we are donating to charity. We've donated about $20,000 since we've launched to various children's charities and they're all children's charities. Um, so as we grow, the hope is we donate more. And if anyone's familiar with the company Newman's Own, which is a salad dressing company, they've donated almost $500 million to charity over the past 40 years. Now that $500 million going to help children in need could have gone to Kraft for their salad dressing. <laughs> could have gone to the shareholders of, you know, any of the many salad dressings are out there, mm -hmm. but there is a salad dressing on the shelf that says, you know what? Not all the money is going to these Wall Street salad dressings. Now that's like my, and I think this is a much bigger market than salad dressing. <laughs> yeah. So, so again, I could talk about the mission forever. Now yeah. that is the, and I'll, I'll leave you with this on that part. That is the public good mission. Now from a maker standpoint, our mission is to help makers and provide them with tools to be successful. That's why we're not just a marketplace. We're creating our community. We have a new social app that is just for makers and artists. We have a new academy called Maker Business Academy that offers training on how to run your business. And we're now also offering your own private websites, kind of like Shopify, where you can have your own website through us. 
um, branded with Elko Imagine and all the marketplace stuff for $10 a month, as you mentioned earlier. Um, and we look at that as people are spending 40 bucks a month on Shopify and they don't need everything Shopify offers. Well, with us, they can spend 10 bucks a month and get their own website, cut their bill in 20 to 25% and be supporting a socially good mission and getting your products onto a new marketplace. I mean, I'm now selling now, but it, we're trying to make it as much of a no brainer for the community as we can. The next question that I have for my community is since Go Imagine is still small and it's a, it's a smaller platform, it's not as well known as a marketplace. And if you, I mean, the assumption is that you kind of have to drive a lot of your own traffic to it if you do set up a shop. What's the advantage of using Go Imagine over a, a standalone website? And I think you kind of touched on that with the, they do the sales tax for you, number one. Um, but it, it's not necessarily a one or the other. You could do both. You know, like I said, I yeah. sell on Etsy. I have a separate website. I've just set up an eBay store, which I don't know what I'm going to do with. I'm not, I might do something yeah. different with it. I just, I'm in the process of setting up on Go Imagine. And I, you know, I don't think it's a bad idea to sell on multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to get traffic. I outrank Etsy on Google for many things for my website. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it can be done. And uh, there's, it, there's, sell, there's sellers right now that when you search for certain things from their shop, their Go Imagine shop goes above Etsy and Google. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that is because of the SEO they didn't go imagine. Right. So yeah. there's, there is some control that you have over that. Now, in terms of traffic right now, and I'll be open about it, we do about 60,000 unique visitors a month. That's, you know, what we've been harboring. We've been, we've been growing ever since the beginning, but, you know, last year we we're probably at 30,000. So we, I'm guessing we probably doubled, but we're doing about 60,000 unique visitors a month. You know, you figure we've got, you know, 3,700 makers. So, you know, a lot of those are not makers, those are actual eyeballs coming to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned before, we have been growing in terms of gross market sales. So we've got 20% growth. In fact, I'm excited about this because there was that pandemic bump who I think a lot of people know about with e-commerce yeah. and a lot of e-commerce companies right now are having a down year in terms of sales. Yeah, Etsy is Etsy actually now, Absolutely, ironically, yeah. ironically, Etsy had more profit this year, but that's because they raised rates on that's a whole nother discussion in terms of how much they sold GMS, the motor sales, they actually lost 4% from what they sold last year. We're up 20% from last year. Oh, that's really good. Um, that's now, good. now I would say love to be say we're double, but the fact that everyone else is going down and we're still having gains is showing growth in the concept in the marketplace. Now, the big important, I think the bigger question here being asked, this is the bigger question. And I'm going to rephrase your question. Okay. Because this is not the question people are asking. The question is not how much traffic do you have? The question is, why should I join Go Imagine? Right now they're asking how much traffic because a lot of sellers are focused on just, if I join a platform, how many sales do they bring to me? Mm -hmm. Right. Which I don't fault them. That, that is, I'm not saying you, you should like every platform you should Amazon, eBay, Etsy, how many sales from an ROI do I get posting on that? Mm -hmm. So imagine is also taking a very different approach to our business. Cause we are not just a marketplace and we are not going to be just a marketplace. We're really focused on being tools to help sellers. What I mean by that is, and can I share my screen again, if you don't mind? Yeah, go right ahead. So when we look at growth of the marketplace, and for those who don't know, we have different member plans and we take, you know, th th three and a half to 5% of transaction, which is a very low transaction fee. We also have a monthly fee. We look at $250, $5 and $10 a month say, are we offering enough value for $5 a month outside of the traffic we bring in? Are we offering enough in $10 outside of the traffic we're giving you? So as an example, the I mentioned Mosaic is $10 a month. You get your own website. Well, let, let's forget the marketplace right now. You pay $40 a month for Shopify. You can have your own website for $10 a month. That does all your taxes for you. Is that a good deal? And, and be on the marketplace also, right? And then, so that goes my next thing. Let's, let's just say Go Imagine brings you low ball, low. We bring you 10 sales a year. How many sales did Shopify drive you a year organically? Mm -hmm. Zero. Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, they're a website platform. They promise and will not market you. They bring you no sales. If Go Imagine brought you one sale a year, that's more than Shopify brought you organically. So we're $10 versus 40 
We do your taxes for you. And we brought you one sale a year. Why are you on Shopify again? <laughs> so, 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 so the, so in this, in this instance of the highest plan is how much traffic do you have? My answer is more than Shopify, more than Wix. That's fair. Commerce, any website platform you choose, we have more traffic. <laughs> that's a, so, that's a fair point. That's right. Fair. So, yeah. so, so, okay. So it's more than zero. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> now, now that's for, if you want your own web, your own website on a platform, it's 10 bucks a month, but, oh, and I forgot to mention this. You're supporting a good mission and good cause that's doing donating to charity mm-hmm. and building a new alternative handmade marketplace, which I think the entire handmade industry wants. Right. Yeah. Right. I, so, I, yes. Yeah. Versus Shopify, which is not building a handmade marketplace and has, in fact, Shopify barely cares about handmade. Right. So then the question is, who are you supporting with that money? Right. So, so again, very salesy here. I will cop to the salesy on this part, but when I rephrase your question of how much traffic we have, you're asking the wrong question. Now on the growth plan, $5 a month, right? Okay. You get a hundred products, whatever, how much traffic on this plan? Well, you, it is $5 a month. I would contend that's a cup of coffee. Um, we also include, which we just, I'm sorry, it's not here right now. We just, uh, launched maker business academy for the growth plan now Uh maker business academy is a new academy we've started within maker circle which is our group if you're on our growth plan you get not only all of our maker business academy resources on brand building mindset business development on how to learn you know q2 plan and prepare these are all the the resources we have experts in the handmade industry helping teach you how to sell through webinars Mm -hmm. teaching you all about SEO, all about Instagram, all about, uh, let's talk about the common misconceptions people have about owning a successful small handmade business. This is all education we're providing you along with being on our marketplace. Is that worth $5 a month to you, right? Oh, and by the way, we're building a new alternative handmade marketplace that everybody in the world wants, but we need your support to do it. Is that worth five bucks a month? The 250 plan. This falls out of your pocket on the way to the car. Uh, it's <laughs> it's 250 a month. And from that, you can support us by getting your things. You will get sales. We do have traffic. Um, it gives you access to Maker Circle, not the MBA, but our social community, which is our app. You can download on the app store to be involved in our community. Um, also, you get to be part of our marketplace. Uh, we do have traffic, 60,000 unique visitors a, a, a month right now. And, you know, yeah, you're probably going to sell something, you know, one sale a year and you've probably covered all your costs for the year, you know, and you'll probably get more than that. So I, I, I've rephrased your question only because, no, we don't have the traffic that Etsy or Amazon or eBay has. We don't. And I would never say we did. Do we have traffic? Yes, we absolutely do. Our largest seller, I think this year is probably going to do $60,000 on our marketplace in sales. Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah, that's good. These yeah. aren't million dollar sellers yet, but we have someone who has built their business using Go Imagine. And I don't want to share who it is for privacy sake, but yeah, that's fine. take it to the bank. They're going to do about $60,000. They are doing a lot of their self-promotion. This isn't all organic. They are getting organic as well, but they used our platform to build their business and successfully did it. And they get organic sales. They could have done that on Shopify. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They did it on Mosaic. They did it on our platform. And we drew drew them more sales and they're supporting our mission. So if you're, and I always tell some people that we are not good for every maker right now. So whoever's listening to this, depending on your business and your strategy, we might not be a good fit for you today. If you're at a point in your business where you're strapped between all the platforms you're working on, and every platform you go on is a time decision. And right now you can only choose another platform. If it brings you the traffic, we might not be the right fit for you. We will be when we grow and I would love your support, uh, but we might not be the good fit. If you're someone who is really uh, looking for sales, but also wants to support our mission and be a part of a great handmade community and be a part of the future of handmade, we would love your support. Right. And I think based on all my discussion is with these plans, we're trying to offer value outside of just the marketplace. Right. Um, And we took this, um, we talk about business for a second. Yeah, sure. 
and this is tech business, not not handmade business. <laughs> okay. Um, we um we took a, we took a, a page out of the book of a company called um, Open Table. Have you heard of them? Yes. So Open Table, if you don't know, for anyone who's listening, is a reservation software. You can make a reservation on a restaurant, and you can see all the restaurants on your area. Well, the way they grew is they had to conquer what's called the chicken or the egg concept. And this is a problem with all marketplaces. How do you get sellers when there's no buyers? How do you get buyers when there's no sellers? And if one of those fails, the marketplace fails, right? Because you don't get that momentum. Now, when you hit the flywheel effect and you scale, they start to grow rapidly on their own. That's why marketplaces are so valuable. When you get to the tipping point, they go. Mm -hmm. Now, the way Open Table overcame it, and this is how we're overcoming it, is you have to have offer value to one side of the marketplace to be there, even if the other side is not there yet, right? The way OpenTable did it was they created kick-ass reservation software. And they went out to all the restaurants and areas and gave them the reservation software for free. And they said, hey, Mr. Res Mr. They went to a restaurant and said, hey, Use our reservation software. You're going to drive me any business? No, but it's free and it's great and you can manage your reservation. And then after they get 20 restaurants on in an area, they can expose it to the buyers and they go on and they go, great, look at all these restaurants on it. So they had to supplement one side. How are we supplementing on it? We're saying, get your own website, cancel Shopify. They're not driving you traffic, save some money. Oh, you need education on how to learn. We've hired experts in the industry to teach you. Oh, you want a better handmade community? Join it through Maker Circle. On top of that, you want to help the world. We're donating all our profits to charity. Oh, on top of that, you want to support a new handmade marketplace that someday will be a formidable competitor to the other marketplaces. Doesn't mean you're going to leave the other marketplaces, but you want to. So we're giving you all these other reasons to join us to help us continue the growth. Some makers see that vision. They see the value. When I say some 4,000 so far, right? Okay. 4,000, 4, see the mission, see the value and have joined us. More coming every day. And someday the ones that are waiting for the traffic, the traffic will be there. And it might be a couple of years from now and join us then, right? Um, at that point, you're reaping the rewards of all the hard work the makers before you put into helping us. Yeah, so, that's I mean, true. If you, if you want to be that person who says, screw it, I'll let everyone else do the work, you know, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to be part of the mission and be part of the solution, you can pick up a plan and start to support us in the early days. And I don't fault someone for waiting. And, and we do everything we can to support those that help us now. That was a long way for me to saying we have traffic, but don't expect the same traffic as Etsy. Is that a long way of saying that? I, I think that's exactly right. I I, under, I totally understand what you're saying. And if you guys look at this pricing, if, if anyone wants to tell me that this is too expensive for you, I will laugh in your face. Okay. Because it's, mm. you. and I've told, I am a big proponent of diversification. I've talked about that recently on my YouTube channel multiple times. And for the last, I don't know how many years I've been telling people to get a website outside of Etsy or just a different, just sell somewhere else. Don't just sell on one platform. And I, I didn't, I, I signed up for the $10 a month plan. I didn't know that had a website with it because I was just looking at the number of listings because I have a lot of listings, yeah. but I might set up another website on it because I have yeah. a separate website. I'm not going to get rid of that one, but guess what? Every piece of the puzzle that you have in your business is a footprint on Google and it can oh, lead wow. people to your shop, regardless of where you're selling. They will find you more if you have more than one footprint on Google. And I, I am going to talk to you about this after we get off. Etsy's footprint is a lot bigger than your shop, and it is not going to show your shop in Google search results. That's right. that's one thing about Etsy and how it works with Google. It will not show your, and they're constantly telling people, oh, you need to optimize your shop for Google. That's to benefit Etsy. It doesn't benefit you because of the way that Etsy and Google work together. And I have some suggestions for you when we're done. I, I want I want to hear those suggestions. I definitely do want to hear them. Can <laughs> I, I can I, I share can I share a quote from you? Absolutely. From a, and this, quote, this quote is from the last CEO, Chad Dickerson of Etsy. Okay. I'll let you read it first because this is what he said in shareholder documents. Ah, uh, yes. Our remarkable user growth is due to sellers promoting their own shops. 
And that was what happened. I mean, so, so what happened was, was yeah. Etsy. And I, I know this isn't about Etsy, but Etsy early on, for whatever reason, the handmade community rallied around Etsy in the early, mm -hmm. the two thousands. And they went out there at every craft fair and they went out there online on Facebook and went Etsy, 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 check out my Etsy shop. At some point I found this ironic. Um, people didn't even refer themselves as handmade sellers. They would say I'm an Etsy seller. And they still do. And they still, they still do. say that. Yeah. I'm an Etsy. seller. You're not an Etsy seller. You're yeah. a handmade seller and you chose Etsy to sell on. Yeah. But one thing Etsy did early on, maybe it was on purpose. Maybe it was just serendipity. Good luck that the community said, Etsy is the one we're going to build. And the whole community around the country built up Etsy. And then Etsy did everything we know they did. Now, for another marketplace, handmade marketplace, which admittedly, I think every handmade seller says they want, uh -huh. the only one way to succeed at big scale is for the makers now to support that. That's the only way for it to happen. I think we're going to succeed no matter what, right? I do. Now, how big Go Imagine succeeds is still up for debate because I think the maker community has control on how successful Go Imagine is going to be. Are we going to be a nice little marketplace? I'll make a little salary, donate to some whatever support. Or are we going to blow this up and be something that we can prove to the world, the handmade sellers of the world have a have power? Mm. Well, they've done it with Etsy. But we discussed before this call, Kara, that mm. I think a lot of sellers feel like Etsy burned them. And so they're just skeptical about the next one they support. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah. that's why, and that's why what's happening is all the handmade sellers are getting their own websites on Shopify and Wix and all this stuff we've been talking. Well, what's happening is what was a million sellers rising everybody up is now everyone doing it by themselves, right? Which yeah. is a lot harder for each individual saying, well, I'm just going to go it alone. You're like, well, what if you all work together, but now did it on a platform that gives you ownership, gives you voting rights, gives you handmade control, helps. I mean, whatever. I'm, I'm really getting in, intense here, but it's because <laughs> it's because we have an opportunity. And when I say we, I'm not saying me. We as a society have an opportunity to change things. It has been proven in history with every revolution that's ever happened that no matter how powerful the monarchy is, it can be changed, but only if people come together. Yeah. And it, yeah. That now, now the debate is who do you, how do you come together? You know, and, and am I the guy, or is this go imagine the company to come together around? I'll give you a hundred reasons why. Yes. I'll give you, and I will throw the kitchen sink at all the things we're trying to do to prove it to you. Uh -huh. But if your last spouse cheated on you, it's hard to be the spouse says, don't worry. We're not going to cheat on you. When you're like <laughs> the last one did, why should I trust you? And so, so we're bending over backwards to earn the trust. And rightfully so, I think we should earn the handmade world's trust. It is, it is right for them to be skeptical, but we haven't gotten into it. I'll just mention it that this year for our community, it's going to happen later this year. And we have a great webinar uh, on uh, it's, it's a long webinar. I mean, some of these, as you can tell for those listening, this can get long. <laughs> it's, uh, it's on YouTube. You, you can watch our webinar on our path to shared ownership with the makers. Um, and let me just show this to you real quick. And Kara, you, I blame you for all this. Cause you invited me on your, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm probably going to, this is going to be like the longest video ever, but I don't care. So, so there's one video here. Uh, pause this. It's called building the maker council, working towards shared ownership. Right. Okay. And it's the building the shared ownership model. Uh, this is a, 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 um, we did this in our, in our Facebook community, but we post on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. So a few things we're doing right now. One, we're creating voting rights for our maker community within the company. Mm -hmm. We're going to be giving a portion of ownership to our maker community, right? So a section of the company will be owned by the makers and we're giving board representation to the makers where makers will be able to vote on two board seats for Go Imagine that represent the makers on the board. And the reason we're doing that is because we want makers who support us to feel they have full transparency and have a full vote in the decisions in the company. 
right? Because what happens on your typical Wall Street company is those who are the vendors, whether it's Amazon or Uber or Lyft or DoorDash or you name it, the vendors have no idea what's happening in the boardroom. Mm, that's they true. don't know. They don't know what decisions are about to happen. They don't know decisions what. So they, they don't know the financials. And for us, we want to be open kimono, and by giving makers the ability to vote on having makers on a maker community, and I, well, obviously we got to keep it contained. It's not like we'll have five thousand board members. Like yeah, gotta, yeah. But but de- democratically, and we're still figuring out. Later this year, we got to figure out how people nominate themselves, and we'll give a time, like almost like a mini election. Why should you represent us or whatever? And we'll have two board seats that are elected. We're going to work on term limits. Maybe it's every two years, whatever that's so these webinars we've done so far have been discussions with the community on how we're we're doing this. We are doing this not by ourselves either. Greg yeah. Brodsky is the founder of a company called start.coop. He has helped countless co-ops create shared ownership models where he's helped employee owned companies become fully employee owned uh, vendor companies become vendor owned. In our case, we're doing a shared ownership model where I will still retain some ownership, but give ownership to the community. There's so many blended models, but we're doing this with the guidance of this organization, start.coop because he's the one, because again, I'm not a co-op employee ownership, you know, expert. So we've hired this person to work with us on creating a culture of ownership by the users, right? I hope that this model entices future marketplaces. Like, wouldn't it be great if Uber drivers had representation on the board of Uber? Wouldn't it be great if eBay sellers had representation on the board of eBay? Wouldn't it be great if DoorDash drivers had representation on DoorDash's board? I think ethically that's the right thing to do. That's what we're doing. But more importantly, as I spelled off my revolution, (laughs) <laughs> it's it's more of a earning trust to get the makers to support us and it's almost i feel like is it sally struthers with the uh the dogs like to give money like for just 250 a month oh, yeah 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 for just two dollars and 50 cents a month you can be part of the new revolution because I'm like take my money to save the dog yeah. that's right <laughs> well, you know, if, if fifty thousand sellers uh, from etsy which is a drop in the bucket for sellers on etsy said we'll give you 250 a month well, within a couple months, we our budget for marketing would be five hundred thousand dollars a month. Like, you know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's like literally, you know. But but when it, when we grow slowly, our budget for marketing grows slowly. Mm-hmm. If we get that wave of fifty thousand, whatever, join right away, our marketing budget, our development, everything grows faster. One year, we're known throughout the country. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. All right, hopefully, I didn't scare away all of your sellers by getting a. Uh, getting so animated. I I just, the fact that you actually used the word ethically in that little speech was perfect for me. And I would hope for my, the people that watch this channel, because I think that we kind of share that same value system. I would hope, I would hope. And if you don't, if you don't like the word ethically, then just go watch somebody else because I'm not interested in you know, oh, ab- absolutely. Well, like I'll give you an example. And I, I honestly, I don't even mind saying this and I don't okay. know if someone's going to join us because of this, but, uh, so, so last week was it last week, the week before I can't remember, but we, we posted, um, just a celebratory post for pride month, right. Mm-hmm. Celebrating it. We celebrate all diversity. We celebrate all people, you know, I think as a community you should, and I think as a community, we should all come together despite any differences. Right we had a couple of people email us and say they were canceling their membership because they didn't want to be associated with a company that was celebrating, you know, LGBTQ. And it was just for us. I was like, well, goodbye. You know, like I was not going to bow down my, my personal ethics from a community standpoint. I wasn't going to ostracize one side of the community because of what you feel, you know, I feel like we're open to all and mm-hmm. I'm not even making a stand on one verse. It's just, we're open to all that's that, that we are open to everything. And, um, I think that's the ethical way to do business. Um, but again, you use the word ethical. I like it's, that. Okay. You know, it's, <laughs> I think the world is overcomplicating things too. I, I mean, yeah, on, I this agree. isn't, this yeah. isn't that hard. Let's all just be fair with each other and build a good marketplace. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's this, this combative world we've lived in that says the only way you succeed is if you stomp on the face of the person next to you. And that is not true. <laughs> That's you know, true. I, I think that most people agree with that. And it's, it's 
you know, the what we're presented with, it makes it sound like more people than actually do want to stomp on your face. Yeah. But I think most people do want to be ethical and most people want to cooperate and most people want to work with each other. Yeah. And that's, I would, you know, I, I really believe that. And I think that if people actually get to know each other, then it's, you know, even better. And those yeah. are the people that we're looking for right now. Those are the yeah. people that I think will see what we're doing and want to get behind it. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot of like putting faith in me as the founder of the company, but I, I don't look at it as me as the founder. I look at it as the community all rallying together. And that's why we're trying to work on the democratic way of running the company. So it's mm -hmm. not about me. You know, it, I'm, no, I'm more, I, like, I'm more the mediator. That. I'm more the mediator between the community, yeah. but I'm not the decision maker for the community, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that, I think that that's a, I think that's good. I think you might have trouble going forward. If you did like grow 50,000 people overnight, you might want to, you might want to still keep being in charge, but. Well, the, well, well but, but, so here's, here's the thing here. I've, I've got, these are, this is a fidget toy, by the way. Um, okay. I fidget. So okay. here's the thing. That's why, you know, when we get to 50,000 sellers, uh -huh. the board side, it's like, we are going to elect your representation. So we're treating it kind of like, you know, it's like, yeah, we can't have 50,000 voices emailing me on change. This yeah, change. exactly. Yeah. But we can certainly create checks and balances by you can vote on your representative. If you don't like decisions you're making, you can the next election get someone else in the board. You yes. Know? Yeah. Um, we also so we're also having shareholders meetings and consider the community our shareholders. So they're invited to the shareholders meeting. So you're right that the bigger we get, the more complicated it will get. Mm -hmm. But I also believe there's a way to do it right. And we're going to figure it out as we go. Mm -hmm. But the only way you innovate is to break things and figure it out as you go, right? Yeah. And and I don't think we're as much innovating the technology because when you, when people say innovate, they think technology, innovate technology. What we're innovation is, is we're innovating the model to run a marketplace. We're innovating the 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 way to do it right, right? Mm -hmm. And And with any innovation, you're figuring it out as you go. Right. So what you mentioned earlier, the IP thing, we mentioned other things, you know, it's all about like, how do we, every, every day is another challenge and mm -hmm. we can't look at the old playbooks. Cause if we look at the old playbooks that other marketplaces have used to be successful, we're not going to be doing it the, the way we want to do it. We're creating a new playbook mm -hmm. and I would like to think we're doing it the right way. Um, but it, all right, I'm, I'm getting off my high horse here. Right? <laughs> This has been a really long interview and I'm probably going to edit it on. How long has this been? It's been, it's almost two hours. No, it's it really been two yeah, hours. It's been two hours. You might need to um, chop this up. This might be, need to be two sections. I don't know. No, if you you know what? I think I'm probably going to chop very little out of this because I think everything that we talked about is relevant and it's important. And I think that people are interested. So yes, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, um, ultim ultimately just, um, I mean, if anyone yeah. hears, it's two hours now. If anyone's here still listening, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we should wrap it up. I will I will wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching. Like if you are still here, then you're, you have great endurance for listening to us. Yeah, um, but give this video a thumbs up. I probably should have said that at the beginning. I don't know. And uh, I don't know, just go use, use the code. I'll put the code for two free months on Go Imagine in the description of this video. And we would love to see you over there. I say yeah, we, yeah. I just because I have nothing to do with Go Imagine as a business. I've just opened my shop over there. But it's, oh, I appreciate it's that. Yeah, it's important to sell on multiple platforms. And this is a really good one, I think, to get in on the ground floor. And not that it's the ground floor, because they already do have traffic. And I'm going to talk to John about this right now. So I will sign off. Yeah. Thank you for I'll watching. Say, can I say one more thing? Absolutely. If before you want to open a shop, you want to meet our community, either join our Facebook group, which is the Go Imagine Official Makers Facebook group. I think there's like 8,000 makers there or download the Maker Circle app on your phone. That's our private social app that is now opened up to the public. So you can meet a lot of the makers in our community on Maker Circle, the app you can download. So that's a way to get involved with us and meet our community before you even take the step of opening a shop and uh, getting involved in that sense. So thank you everybody for listening to me rant on for the past two hours. And thank, thank you, you. Kara, thank you, Kara, for having me. <laughs> Thank you. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a good afternoon or a morning or whatever. I don't know. I don't know when you're listening to this. All right. Bye. I'll talk to you later.